<sighs> Are we good? Guys, welcome to another Talking Truck Show. I am Andre with TFL Truck. And Kit with MrTruck.com, and this is more of a talking, walking show. Yes, we're changing our format. If you've seen our live shows recently, we're featuring a truck or a car. On Mondays, we have car shows, primarily I've for heard car of cars, questions. Yes. Cars, you know those vehicles, I've heard of them. Right? I don't yes. fit in them, but I've heard of them. And then, of course, on Fridays, we do Talking Truck Show. And today's show is brought to you guys by this little engineer coloring book, Cars and Trucks. And it's written by Seth McKay. And you can use the link below in the description of this video. And check this out, guys. Oh, it's, cool. Um, Seth has three kids. He's an engineer. And they came up with this idea to teach, you know, kids about mechanicals axles, transmissions, engine positions, everything, wheels, uh, carburetors, fans. Wow. So it's a fun gift for the holidays. Do you have to order it or get in, can you go to the bookstore and get it? Well, right now it's on Amazon, so click oh, the cool. link below. It's really cool. Two-day delivery, get it by Christmas. Yeah, really cool gift. Sorry to jump in real quick, guys. Yes. Andre, can you click your mic on one? Okay. Setting. Am I allowed? Okay, where do you have your mic back at? That's all the leg I'm going to show you. Oh my goodness, what are you doing, Zach? Thank, thank you guys. And of course, this show is about you guys asking questions. Yes. And we have our Rem Rebel uh, Rouser project truck. Lifted truck with these cool tires and cool exhaust and cool kind of a, like a light bar. And Heck yeah. Loaded. So it was at SEMA. I saw it at SEMA. It was at SEMA at the Shell booth. Yes. We had a Shell Rotella project. So here you go, guys. You could see it. Um, if you follow TFL truck, TFL now, You've seen a lot of this truck. We've done probably 25 videos with it. That's true. It's visited Moab. It's visited Vegas. Yeah. It's been all over. It, yeah. Texas did yeah. the, big, the big thing where you took a camera and stuck it in the engine. Heck yeah. So all of that is on TFL Truck Channel. We did a truck torture test series with Shell, Rotella, gas truck oil. That's right. Basically uh, ref, um, filled the engine with a Shell Rotella oil. We did about 8,000 miles on that one oil change and then... Altogether, this truck has about 21,000 miles. I remember you had wood in the back. Yes. You hauled a bunch of logs around. Carrying it up to Mount Evans. Yes, chasing those goats up there. <laughs> Very cool. And sheep. By the way, people told us those were sheep. No, the Rocky Mountain goats. The okay. little guys, little well, tiny horns, those are Rocky Mountain goats. Yeah, so there was a big controversy if it was a goat or a sheep. It's a goat. Anyways, uh, one of the big announcements on today's show also is that this truck is for sale. Do you oh want my to gosh. Well, I've got a I've got a Ram for sale too. Mine's a '94. I could upgrade to something like this. You take trade-ins. <laughs> Give me twenty grand for Dodgezilla, and I'll put it toward the truck. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's not it's not published on the site for sale yet, but uh, we wanted you guys to know about this first. Uh, we're basically done with the truck, so within the next couple of weeks, maybe a month, um, it'll be out there available for sale. So if you're interested. Um, Keep following the live show and right. you'll, you'll find out. Well, you've added a lot of things to it besides the tires, the wheels, the light bar, the exhaust, the intake, yeah. everything. So let me pop the pop the hood, actually. I can show you the performance exhaust system. Yeah, and it's got all, it's even got a tonneau cover too, doesn't it? Heck yeah. Well, not, not right now. The tonneau cover is off it, but the tonneau cover does come with the truck. It's pretty cool. We have this Mopar performance air intake. And it's the e-torque engine too on that Hemi. Yeah, mild, mild. Um, hybrid system. You can kind of see the electric motor right there, the e-torque motor. And a lot of Moab mud as well. I see that. And I Texas that. mud and all that stuff. We also have a performance exhaust on this puppy. And new parts in a transfer case too? Oh, just a drive shaft. Oh, just a drive shaft? Okay. Let's see. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so and it sounds so cool. It's got a rumble. A really yeah, a rumble. Well, uh, we can't really rev it in here in the studio, otherwise we'll may pass yeah, out. Yeah, we need oxygen. <laughs> But um, I wanted to show you the lights as well. Zach, should we do that? Yeah, we should totally uh, do that. Oh, okay, so right now we have the headlights. Kent, go over there, Kent, and, and just uh, stay right I, I'm there. I'm going to go over here <laughs> and not drink some non-sponsored beverage coffee. Okay, Zach, do you want to help me out with this? Do you want to dim the lights? I shall dim the lights. Okay. There, what do you guys think? <laughs> Kent, are you all right? I am. I just about walked into a sink here. Okay, lights. Anyway, we, we have Mopar off-road lights on the sports bar back there. And let's walk around. Um, let me show you guys on this side. 
We have 35 inch tall tires, Toyos, uh, Mopar wheels down here. And in the back, we got Linex bed liner. Of course, the sports bar I told you about. And we also have a tunnel cover, which is not on this truck. But I've been pretty happy with this build because it's not just for looks. It's more fu also functional. It has a two inch leveling kit in the front as a lift. The bed is very useful now because initially we bought it with no bed liner whatsoever. Yeah, and they did a good, good job on the bed liner. We did it to my truck too. I was yeah, you impressed. have an F-150, right? Line X, you betcha, they did mine. Now two, this has probably the best looking interior of any Ram. Have you seen the interior of this thing? They got the tire track on the seat. They got all the red accents. This is my favorite interior of any truck. It is nice. I like the, um, the way it's done with the Rebel stitching and yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. So this truck is about a year old. We bought it oh, about the, a year ago. You got the cool moonroof, too, that panoramic moonroof. Panoramic. I love it. Zach, do we have any comments or questions coming in so far? Yeah, we have a few. We should sell this now. <laughs> Are you the auctioneer? Uh, yes, 5000 Do I have 5000 <laughs> Let's, get, let's Joe, get some offers. Joe Cole just says, uh, hey, fellas, how you doing? Good to see Mr. Truck again. Yes. Well, thanks. Yes, good to be seen. I'm out of the home again. <laughs> well, um, well, actually, you're, you're moving. You have I a am big moving, project. I am moving. It's like a 108-mile round trip. So we got about seven loads, and we got about seven loads to go, and I'll be out in the country. So, guys, if you're in Colorado and if you want to help Mr. Truck uh, move, uh, just... Bring your truck in your trailer. <laughs> I'm far enough in the country, I can marry my cousin now. This is what? so cool. No. Oh, man. Please don't say that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Matthew Guarino said of the light bar on the Ram uh, that he hates the light bar, but it works really well. Yeah, so, I mean, it does kind of impede some functionality because... Yeah, it's like gator rack. Over here, it's hard to reach in the bed ar around us. The tunnel cover was very difficult to mount, but we managed to do it. But it kind of allows you to put some lights way up high so they can shoot light far down the trail if you're yeah. running kind of with higher See speeds. See where the coyote is out yeah. there chasing the coyotes at night. I love it. Uh, one of the questions was when we took it, remember that video where you were with us yeah, climbing it, mountains? Yeah, the were transmission got hot or something. We had to pull over. Yeah, yes. so what was happening, Roman, uh, Roman was in the ridgeline. Right. And we were creeping really slowly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a message on the uh, trip meter, you know, in the center. Right. Saying that transmission hot. And I think it was because, you know, he was feathering the throttle and the brake. He was just kind of moving very oh, slowly because, it. because it doesn't have a low transfer case. Right, right. So we've never seen that problem before Yeah. or since. So, yeah. so we don't know exactly. I think the question was, is that a common problem? Does everybody have this problem? No. Uh, no. I don't think so. And also, they've updated the Ridgeline for 2020. Really? So what did they change? Because it's, it's transmission. Not, it's not really an off-road truck, but people no. will play with them. But yeah, so they a new, new the transmission. transmission. Nine-speed now. Oh, cool. So they had a nine-speed transmission in the Pilot, and now they stuck it into the Ridgeline, and it's available still for sale for 2020 and, and beyond. Okay. And uh, they they actually kind of pared down how many models are available. So before they had like five or six trim levels. Right. Now right. it's more like four. Yeah, three. I liked it. I don't know if you saw my review, but I, I, I said good things about it. We went out and played it, pulled traders with it, and it has a purpose. It's not going to compete with the big boys, mm -hmm. but, you know, for a lot of, of urbanites, and, and that works perfectly, and it's actually, you know, a dependable vehicle. I, I, like I said, I wouldn't recommend off-road because it didn't have a lot of clearance. Well, yeah, but it's mostly for on-road. I mean, it, is. it handles it's, it's really a, well it's on, a, on the road. It's a city pickup, and, yeah. you know, there's good things about it. I, I, I enjoyed my review with it, but, uh, yeah. So that's cool. Did they change the look of it? Does it still look like an El Camino? It's, or It still looks like, like a four-door El Camino. Okay, no more bullfrog like the original and one And the transmission is now a push button. So, you know, there's what no is, more That's left. a trend. It's what a, is it with push? We got knobs and push buttons. What happened to the little handle thing? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Do you like push buttons? So we have... Uh, Question from Ben Roberts, um, which has already been answered in the chat, but I'll ask it anyway. Could you guys give us your buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it rating on the Ram as of right now? That's a really good question. Are we showing uh, pictures of Zach? I don't know if you've ever done that before. Now people know what he looks like. Buy it, lease yeah. it, rent it, or forget it. <laughs> By the way, um, uh, so a lot of you guys were asking if I was going to buy the Ram after the TFL is done with it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still pretty expensive for me right now. So, no, I'm not buying it. 
Uh, so I guess from me, it's not a buy it. <laughs> well, I've got to sell my no. other RAM before I can buy another RAM. That's no, just how and, it is. Plus, you're moving. Yeah. No, but uh, I was really happy. So I did a long-term update, 12-month update on the truck. It's on TFL Truck Channel. I kind of laid out everything that happened, the modifications we've done, and a lot of the things that there were a couple of recalls, right? Yes. Because but every vehicle, everybody has every, a few recall. Every new vehicle has a recall. Ram and, may lead that, but I think they all have some recalls. And we did break a front drive shaft, but this was on a very, very hard obstacle. Yeah, that was um, abusing off road. So yeah. You, so I'm happy. I would give it a buy it. Yeah. Uh, there, there was one minus, one considerable minus I talked about in that video is fuel economy. Exactly. That's the only problem I had with it. I thought I should have got a lot better fuel economy. Did you pay all the extra money for that e-torque? And I don't know that it paid off. I don't know. I mean, it's really hard to tell because it doesn't give you more power to pull a trade with. It may give you a little more power off the start. Mostly it's a stop-start device. So that's my only disappointment with the tube. I love the interior, but the fuel mod should have been better. I mean, it was rated higher than that. You but guys it's, a, are, it's a pretty easy solution if you're not sure about the mild e-torque system, uh -huh. just don't get it. That's true. Just I, get a V8, I, just a regular yeah, Hemi. I, I mean, I had big hopes for it, but I don't think I would buy it. I would buy the regular Hemi. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Steph exactly. of Need and said to the question of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, um, is that they're selling it, so anything other than buy it doesn't make sense. That's a fair <laughs> point. Um, also said brand new front drive shaft. That's a selling point. That's true. You did get the front drive shaft yes. replaced. Well, it wasn't um, wore out, though. It was broke, but, so but guys, it's but guys, not like an, a wear <laughs> item. It has all brand new uh, certified parts, Mopar parts, yes. Falcon shocks, yeah. Toyo tires. That's about $12,000 of parts. Well, that's what I was thinking. This is equipped the way a millionaire would do it, not the way you and I would do it in an old garage. But if it you had all the money in the world, it's exactly how you would do it. So you're going to buy all those accessories for, you know, not retail. You'd be buying it for wholesale. So I think it's a, it's a good value. Yeah. Trucker Dan, who donated $2 to the live chat a little earlier. Thank you, Trucker Dan. Money, money, always. money, money, money. Ask, Merry what Christmas. are you selling your truck for, Kent? Ah, you want a dollar amount <laughs> on live TV? Twelve thousand bucks. Well, I've got over six thousand in it, but I take a little less. I mean, <laughs> okay. let me get the question list. For one there's second. videos I'll, all I'll, over the place. I'll, with I'll my, there's back. videos on TFL Truck videos on MrTruck.com. You go to any place where I list it on the side, they'll show you like five or six videos. So watch all the videos. Ruben overhauled the transmission, so it's a super transmission. It's an overkill. So yeah, it's really cool. It's a rock climber. It's got bed liner all over the place, and it is so cool. But yeah, do you, do you want to sit down by the truck and take? Oh, some we more gotta questions? sit down too. I thought we had to walk and stand all day long. Well, we could. We oh, could. Okay. Um, so uh, a couple of quick questions that came in on our alias oh. ask at tfltruck.com. Uh, Bobby's asking or saying, you guys should do a comparison test between the new Chevy 6.2 liter V8 and the 3 liter Duramax diesel towing and drag racing and everything. Between which two trucks? I know the 6.2 and the what else? And the 3 liter Duramax. The you know, that would be six. good, but I really hope that Chevy recalibrates that 10 speed because I want it to work better with an exhaust brake and all that. But for power, nothing beats that. 6.2 is a racehorse. Yeah. But, I, but I think I think where Bobby is coming from, they cost about the same. Yeah, they do. The, the engine is exactly the yeah, same cost. 10 speeds on both of them. Right. So right. I think that's a smart idea, except I don't have those trucks right now. So if we can yeah. get them, if we can get them at the same time, we'll definitely compare them. Well, that's what I would wonder because the three liter inline six diesel is turbocharged mm -hmm. and the six two gas is not. Do you think that just be the turbo and the high altitude that that would be better? Because you know, that's why the EcoBoost from Ford always True. beats the six twos in the mountains. It doesn't beat at sea level. The I six think, two wins the contest. I think the drag race, the six two would win. Okay. It has well, more horsepower. Yeah, same torque. It, it, it's, same it's, torque, yeah. but a lot more horsepower. It loses some in the mountains, but it is. That's one of my favorite yeah. GM engines. Okay, I have a question for you guys as yes. it pertains to the Rebel. Um, the Cam 3LS, how has the Mopar catback exhaust been overall? Do you recommend the Mopar exhaust over aftermarket ones? Yes. I have not tested every exhaust system. <laughs> Uh, especially on this brand new generation of RAM. But here's a good thing about the Mopar system. First of all, it sounds really good, as you could yeah, see on the TFL it's, truck it's videos. It's a good noise. Yeah, I love it. But on the TFL truck video uh, a few months ago, I did a sound measurement test, the yeah, loudness. Right. On the highway, it's the same as a factory exhaust. Really? So it doesn't boom, it doesn't drone. Uh, it's just very refined on the highway. But then when you put your foot in it, Whoa! Yeah, the, the sound comes. Well, some of the maybe we could demonstrate that at the end at of the, the very show. end. Yeah, at the very end of the show, we'll fire up the truck up. Well, they had a factory uh, 
package like that a couple years ago when I was driving down the road with a trailer on my RPM, of course, jumped with the trailer and it was so loud you couldn't hear yourself talking that way. Yeah. And that's that's like towing. So if you're driving down the highway, you're not going to have a big increase in RPMs. But once you get over there, you know, 3,000 RPM, it's loud. But yeah. yeah. And, and tell me this. Yes. Professor, Mr. Bullseye. Bull, bull, yeah. Uh, who makes the Mopar exhaust? Do they actually have little elves in there making them, or do they buy them from somebody else? Yes, it's made at the North Pole. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Well, no, I, I, I was wondering I because exactly. a, lot, a lot of the factory options are made by somebody else. It's like Walmart. Yes, you know, yes, they absolutely. brand everything themselves. I was I wondering just, if Mopar was an in-house or an outhouse. I mean, uh, <laughs> somewhere else. I just don't know. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm just wondering. Gustavo Kuna just donated five Canadian dollars. Holy cow! Gustavo, thank Canadian you very much. Canadian dollars. There's thank a rumor we need to debunk too from Joey's cleaning lady who asks, "What happened to the Comanche?" Rumor is it was stolen. No, I don't know where this rumor began. I thought you guys sold if it. There was a stolen Comanche around here. It's not ours. No, so we have a Jeep Comanche pickup. You still have you know. it? Yeah, we still have it. It's in storage, mm -hmm. and we we haven't done a video with it in a long time, but it's still here. Promise, it wasn't stolen. There was no, uh, you know, there's no evil doing there. We still have it, and it might go on sale. I'm not sure yet, but I we should still, buy that. We one still after love I sell it. My Ram. We I still should, yeah. love it very much. It's a good-looking truck. I always like those puppies, but I really like the original Gladiator. I, I love that. Oh, truck. the big truck. Back in the '70s. Yeah. Yes, big grill. What man. about the new Gladiator? It's wow. a Jeep. It looks like a Jeep. I mean, it's a Wrangler. Like a Wrangler. Yeah, I don't want to look like Gladiator, the big fender flares, the big radio. It was a wonderful looking truck. Okay. Uh, Joe is asking here a prepared question uh, or comment. Um, when are you planning to test a brand new heavy duty Ram 2500 with a 6.4 Hemi and an 8 speed automatic? Um, very soon. Uh, I'm hoping to do this at the end of January. Oh, you'll have one then? Yeah, I'm hoping. Um, or maybe early February. And we already tested the power wagon. You're right. Did you have a power wagon also? The, the new power wagon, I mean. I don't think I did at the launch, but I, I don't know. Maybe I did. I mean, I'm, I'm old. I can't remember <laughs> squat anymore. So, so it's so possible. The new power wagon obviously also have the new ZF 8-speed uh, automatic, but it has, you know, it has oh. a lift and a big yeah, giant tires. That's a cool one because you can put it in low range and go, what is it, 60, 70 miles an hour? It's some crazy speed in low well, range. I think Nick Kappa from Ram yeah, wants was, us to do that. Was it 60, 65? <laughs> some crazy I, speed. I, you never take a low range that high. I, I was amazed by it. I think you can go about 45 or 50. Oh, it's higher than that. It was, I've never tried it was, there higher. Was a, there was a crazy number that they gave but us. But we will be testing a regular heavy-duty Ram soon, probably within a month or so. Uh, the Paul's question about the Ridgeline, we kind of touched on that already. The new 2020 model, we haven't, I haven't driven yet. Yeah, um, yeah. So and, we, and, and we, we hope, hopefully we will. We're working on the Ike right now, so, you know, that'll be cool in the spring. We'll have all the results of yeah, that. That'd be for awesome. the Gold Hitch. That's a lot of work. Have you told them about how big the trailer is? Uh, well, we kind of previewed secret? it. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay. It's still, it's still oh. good. We have an Iron Bull trailer from Jayhawk Trailers. Right? Forty feet long, plus eight foot neck. Forty-eight foot, a semi trailer almost. It's a hot, it, it, hot shot trailer. It's the biggest trailer oh, we've ever used. It, it, three inch balls. It's got big ball coupler. Absolutely, and we have a, a Caterpillar next generation excavator yeah, on Yeah, yeah, track hoe. We uh, always wanted the track hoe. Heck yeah! And total weight for the dualies was thirty thousand pounds, just about. And those videos are coming a little bit later in January. It's awesome. Uh, when we compare them. It was awesome. It was cold, but it was awesome. Hey, no impressions. No impressions. No impression about the cold? <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> the blizzard, actually. So Shane so is stolen. asking uh, <laughs> in, the, in the live chat, via live chat from the previous show, uh, has General Motors fixed the transmission torque converter problem on the Chevy Colorado and Canyon with an 8-speed? I don't know exactly which problem um, Shane is referring to, and I haven't heard. And I haven't this seen a recall problem. on it, uh, you know, so it's news to me. But we um, haven't hit the problem ourselves when we tested the trucks. Sorry, Shane, uh, can't can't help you um, with that question. Carl is asking, can anyone tell why there is a difference between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? Uh, towing rating on the three liter straight six diesel. Remember this? Well, it's all about weight. You know, the, the transfer case, the axle, all that weighs more, so yeah. it means you have less payload. Less towing capacity, it's on everything. You add, you know, step sides, it's going to lower your rating. You add anything to those things. Yeah, uh, but this particular question from Carl uh, was about um, also the new 2020 straight six diesel. I love that uh, engine. Because the two-wheel drive um, yeah. had a lower rating. Remember this? I think it has to do with um, the well, axle ratio. 29 
in two-wheel drive, what highway, is that what he's talking about? He's talking about X-ray, he's talking mm. about fuel mileage. No, he's talking about total towing capacity. Oh, towing capacity. Yeah, we had some weird axle ratios. Yeah. They were all for fuel mileage. Yeah. So you can get lower. I'll ask GM to clarify this, why the two-wheel drive truck had a higher towing capacity. I'm sorry, a lower towing lower. capacity yeah. than the four-wheel drive. Yeah. And that would have been on any of them, actually. So we have a couple of donations. Uh, Five dollars from Daniel Martin. Daniel All Martin. right, Thank Daniel. You. Thank you very much. And twenty dollars from Steve Bitto, who says, "Merry Christmas from the Poconos in Pennsylvania." <laughs> Poconos? Please. Is that an island? What's the Poconos? Mountain. <laughs> no, no, it's not the Kokomo. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, I was thinking about margaritas or something. And wow. He also said, "Go easy on the balls." <laughs> Well, three-inch balls are for heavy well, you, weights. You bought an extra one. You're so excited. You bought an extra one on, on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So we got spare balls now, three inches. We love three-inch. Australia had them for 50 years. By the way, for a $20 donation, um, you can get, like, a sticker. So email us um, at ask at tfltruck.com, uh, and we'll send you a sticker or some, something else. And there'll be something special in your stocking this year. Yes. So we have uh, another twenty dollars that just came in from Holy Kenny G. Cow. I'm Kenny no G. Relation. Kenny G. He's got the flute <laughs> thing going on, right? Now Kenny G. Did the flute? Was he flute guy? You, you got to know when to hold him. Oh no, no that's no. Kenny Rogers. Oh okay, that's something else. <laughs> he didn't play the flute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Kenny G. Says great job, guys, with all the reviews and videos. Keep them coming. Thank you. Well, thanks. I'm considering the three liter Duramax versus the third gen Eco Diesel. Only tow about seven thousand pounds once a year and need 4x4 four four for monthly hunting. Um, after driving both, which would you recommend? Oh, man, I love yeah. that. I love the Duramax, but I think they need to do some calibration so that the grade shifting and exhaust brake work better. Same transmission with the Ford. So I know it can be done because Ford did it. I love that truck. And th this last weekend, I had the AT4 Carbon Pro version of it with a diesel. Man, that's a gorgeous truck. It's got two-inch lift kit, aggressive dirt track tires. Mm -hmm. I love that truck. I, I mean, my son and I was both driving through the mountains this last weekend. I love that truck. So I, you know, I mean, and there's an eco diesel. There's big fans for those. They've been around for a long time now, so we know durability. We just know that they have fights with the EPA. And the Duramax, this is the first year, so we really don't know mm -hmm. dependability. But I, I'm excited. I'm, I, I, if I had room in my stable and wasn't moving, I would probably be really interested in buying that GM 3 liter inline six. I'm excited I, about it. I just a need a few things updated on it. It's a very close contest. Uh, we did an MPG loop on both of them. Uh, the GM truck did its hair better by one yeah. MPG. Yeah. Uh, also towing and not towing. And the GM truck has a little bit more t uh, power, horsepower. Well, yeah, it's amazing because when you did the Ike, and you published that one, haven't you? Yes. Okay, yes. so the G the Ram had a six, you know, an eight speed automatic. Yeah, and the GM, the GM, GM had 10, ten. The Ram did not have an exhaust brake. The GM did, and yet going down the hill, the Ram braked better. Yeah. With an eight and speed. And up it's, the hill, the GM did a little bit better. Yeah, the GM had a little more so, power. So it was kind of a toss up. I'm voting for GM just by a slimmest hair. Yeah, they're, they're both good trucks, yeah. and I was glad to see that, that Ram came back with it. And so now all three, all of the Detroit big three have little half-ton diesels. Yeah. We've been waiting 20 years for that. Or all more, these, or yeah, more. Yeah, all these things are coming yeah. around, man. It's like it's going to be a good year for 2020. But, you know, yeah. And, guys, once again, at the end of the show, we're going to fire up the Ram so you could hear it. Uh, and we'll take bids. Anything over 40000 100000 a hundred thousand, <laughs> <laughs> over a hundred thousand. Okay, okay. Five dollars yes. from Izzy, one, two, three, four. Izzy, thank you so much. Much love from North Carolina. Thank you. Um, cool. Is there a work truck version of the 2020 Silverado HD? Yes. Yes, there is. That's the one that grill, everybody hates the grill. The black grill. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't mind. Of course, we like, I like the chrome, but yeah, they started, that's the first picture we ever saw was that work truck. So the way that GM is rolling out their 2020 heavy duty trucks, they started with a crew cab. Right. Then they're starting, I think, starting to ship the shorter double cab, yeah. the extended yeah. cab. Yeah. And then they'll also be shipping, eventually, I'm not sure when, right. a single regular two-door. Yeah, you bet you. So, well, they, they've got to because that's, that, that in a dually is the one that does tow 35,500. So yeah. they've got to come out with that. Where did these, are these the ugliest wheels you've ever seen? No, they're the they're, hottest. They're they're Those, the hottest I, wheels. I think they're the ugliest wheels I've seen today. No, they're the hottest wheels, and it's a, for a different project. <laughs> okay. Focus. Focus. That's going to be something I would never drive. So. Peak of one of our projects. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not for the Ram. Not it's for the Ram. Oh, it's not, not for my trucks either. We have a, a sneak peek behind the scenes video coming to TFL now tomorrow on that project. Okay. So, for that. so yeah. come back tomorrow. We'll tell you more about these wheels. Um, 
Other comments? I'm running out Travis of Travis Corda uh, donated 20 bucks. Travis, thank um, you. Cool. So he tried to send this and got kicked out of the chat. Sorry about that. Sorry I don't about know what happened there. Um, he just said, great. Uh, thanks for all your great content. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Well, thanks. And by the way, there was a question earlier uh, of whether we're doing a show on Monday. Yes, we are. Monday, we have a show. show. Are we doing one next Friday? You and me? Uh, uh, are you around? Well, yeah, it's two days after Christmas. You should be back to work by then. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can be sure that Roman will make us do a show. Well, yeah, that's next uh, week from today. we got to keep these back on because we've been so busy testing trucks. Yes. We've missed a lot of Fridays. Yeah. And so we certainly want to try to do it The only time regularly. we miss a show is when we're on the mountain towing. Yep. Nick Upchurch donated 10 bucks. Thank you, Nick. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey guys, my 2015 F-150 five liter has a tow rating of 10,300 pounds. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't get a trailer that heavy though, right? What is a good travel trailer weight to go with that kind of towing capacity? Well, what, what engine is it? Five, five liter, liter Coyote. Coyote. It oh, sounds like he's oh. got a 373 or a 355. Yeah, and see that truck, I mean, my rule of thumb, if you're hauling horses like live animals, you want to drop it by 10% because of the movement you have and the, you know, the surging you'll have on the engine. But if you've got a static load like hay or you know, an well, what RV. What about like a camping trailer? Yeah, yeah, right, an RV would do it have just water in it. Yeah. And I, I, to me, I mean, it depends on if you're in the mountains or not. If you're driving out here in Kansas, you can go to the very maximum weight, jack it up there. But if you're in the mountains, you know, you'd probably come down a little to come bit. Down. Probably so, 10% or more. But, so uh, most of our testing at TFL Truck, we use a 7,000 pound trailer for efficiency runs. Right, to make them all do the same truck and trailer. Exactly. Same trailer. And then when we do I Gauntlet World's Toughest Towing Test, we use a 9,000 pound trailer usually. Right, right. And that's to make it kind of an even playing field across all have right, to right. Because when we're comparing all these vehicles, we have like to go with the low. Yeah, we have to go with the lowest number, which is what we had to GM on all these goosenecks. We only yeah. had to stay at twenty-three because they can go higher. And now they're up over thirty thousand, so we're going to go crazy this year. Yeah, so I would recommend staying, you know, probably below nine thousand. You know, maybe eight thousand, seven thousand pounds loaded. Depending loaded. on where he is. If yeah, he's in Kansas. Nobody cares. Loaded up uh, or Florida, you can you can right. haul heavy. Right, the mountains a little different. But be careful with your brakes. All the, People forget about braking. Yes, yeah, so you got to have good Always. trailer brakes and good truck braking. And yeah, and so you, leave big distance in front, you know, to the vehicle yeah. ahead of you, and be be careful with. And braking. use your tow haul mode because that'll help you grade shift, which is really important. And it works good. Does that one have a ten speed or is that the old six speed? Well, may, maybe a ten if it's a new truck. Yes. Uh, Joe R had a comment uh, saying, "I'll donate if Tommy to the Monday show if Tommy wears a red and white striped shirt and matching hat, so he looks like Waldo." I wanted to point that out because I'm pretty sure he's watching the show. Ten bucks? To only Man, ten? Ten? For, okay. If I had to do all that, I'd want... Oh, he didn't give him out? Oh, he give him out? Oh, we want go. 50 bucks if we're going to make him look weird. <laughs> uh, Tommy, if you're listening, please uh, <laughs> uh, resp that respond. Yeah. I, maybe I can go into the store and buy you an outfit. And have a bidding war. Have other people offer him 60, 70, 80. Let's go, man. But, but we it's all Christmas season. Family rated. We, we, you know. Well, yeah, don't put tassels on or nothing. Just get a shirt. A uh, couple more questions about the Ram. Ken, the long guy, was asking, um, how are you feeling about the intake on the Ram? Oh, the, uh, do the, you think it's worth the money? The cold air thinking, intake. You've got. He's thinking of adding one himself. <coughs> I don't know if it's worth the money. Uh, so the Mopar one is actually is actually expensive. Uh, to my opinion, um, where it saves you gas or it gives you extra power. I, ha I haven't been able They're to small measure. small numbers. It's yeah, very small numbers. The only thing you're hoping to do at high elevation for us yeah. is just getting a little bit more air. And actually, if you can like lean back a little bit, the air it gets is right, right below the hood here. Instead of getting it somewhere from underneath the fender, the new performance intake takes it right from the grill, and that's above the radiator. Right, and that's so pretty cool. That gives you a little more cold, yeah, cold air, hold back cold air intake. Yeah, ram effect, because right. the air is coming right into it. Yeah, and it looks cool on there, you know, and it's, yeah, it's, I, it, gives, it gives you a little bit, but it really take a long time to pay them off, because they're probably four or $500. Uh, $800. $800. So, so uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. So, here's my take on the intake. <laughs> it's a wow factor. So if you pop your hood at a kind of a get together or cars, yeah, and, cars coffee, and coffee, yeah, you say, great. "Look at this! I have a big fat, you know, rectangular you know, filter." It and sucks intake, air, and man. It sucks air. Sucks but air. But if you're counting dollars and cents, and you're trying to get better efficiency or maybe horsepower, it's not a great, you know, no. improvement. Yeah, even the exhaust doesn't give you a whole lot. But all that together with a programmer makes a big difference. But the programmer, if you don't have more air, if you don't have more exhaust, get rid of the heat. 
then they are hard on things. The but exhaust system is worth it on, uh, because yeah. the sound is great. Yeah. It's really quiet on the highway while cruising. The exhaust system is there, but it pairs well with the intake. Yeah, put it all together, so. you got something. But yeah, that's kind of how that is, and that'd be a pretty big investment. Trucker yeah. Dan just donated another 10 bucks. Holy Dan. cow, Merry Christmas. You've supported us so much. Yeah, he says, uh, off topic, but Kent, what do you think of the 1998 Dodge Dakota 4x4 with the ma uh, five-speed manual and the 318? Um, the one he's looking at only has 143,000 miles. I've always known the 318 to be pretty reliable. The 318's fine. The rest of the Dakota has problems back in those years. That's why they kind of dropped it. It was a, it was a, yeah, it had problems. It was in a shop a lot, and a lot of times low miles means it was in a shop a lot. I mean, I, when I sell trucks, that's what you found. You found a lot of vehicles that had real low miles is because they were in a shop. So wow. I don't know. I'm not bad. My cousin has had several of those, and he's had really good luck with them. I like the 318. But there's other problems in that truck, and I hope you get it fixed. I hope it comes back as a new truck, just like what they've done. Ram has improved their truck line so much over the last 10 years. So I'm hoping that the Dakota will come back as a whole new, exciting truck. But, but also a manual transmission. That's kind of a, a truck that's not available anymore. No. A mid-sized no, truck, no. you know, with a so large displacement yeah, engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Gladiator is probably the only pickup with a manual still. Right, and well, you still you still unless wanna, you're talking about off-road yeah, trucks. Yeah, take that truck to mechanic, have inspect it, make sure the clutch is good, you know, test it all out, because, I mean, my cousin's had really good luck, so it's I mean, got the heaviest tailgate ever made, <laughs> those things. You don't want to drop it on your child's head because it'll hurt, but... Ouch. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, but it looks engines, good, and it was a mid... That was like the first midsize, and we had all these mini trucks, and then the Dakota came out, and it was a midsize, so it was it was a gap between the, the, the midsize or the, the full size. It's a big engine with a manual. It's yeah, great. I mean, I mean, it looked good, and people that are Mopar fans, they love them to death, but uh, I know it had other, you know, problems. Not emotional okay. problems, it had mechanical things. You give me problems, emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> more more comments? Yeah, we'll do uh, one more question and then we'll fire up the Ram Rebel and call it a day. Um, from N. Elliot. Oh, actually, I've got one more after this. N. Elliot? Um, first from N. Elliot um, says, looking good, Mr. Truck. Well, thanks. Uh, N. Elliot. Uh, Merry Lord. Christmas. <laughs> looking to get a Ram Rebel, Ram Rebel Eco Diesel, excuse me. Um, what are your thoughts? Ooh, well, uh, I yeah. drove one just briefly yeah. at, at their event, at the first drive event. Uh -huh. um, so it's basically this truck with a new three liter eco diesel. It's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, we had Kelsey that loves those diesels and we had we drove that one. And yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I think I mean, it does I, really well with the eight speed. I'm impressed with how well everything works on it. It's it's rare to have an off road truck from the factory with a diesel, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the half ton segment. GMC 84 1500 yeah. is another one. Yeah, that was uh, that was like, a whole like new thing. Saying, exactly. Like yeah. You were saying. So I, I I'm excited by it. We haven't tested it in Colorado. Uh, at least I haven't. Uh, but when I drove it in Minnesota uh, on the first drive event, it was I was really impressed. That's got to be a, a really sought after truck. I mean, well, if you go to a dealership. They're probably putting a big markup on probably. it because they're not because very many got, of them out there. It's got the low end torque and it's yeah. got the four wheel drive with four low, so it just can creep up yeah. very slowly. Yeah. Very nice. And that's supposed to be offered an air or a coil spring, right? Both options yes. on that yeah. truck. So. And the Chevrolet Silverado Trail Boss is not available with a diesel. No, just so the GMC version. Just the GMC version. Yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah. So that's it's an interesting truck, you know, and, and if you watch my video with Kelsey, hers is like a 90 or 2017, I think. Oh, by the way, um, there were a couple of news this week. Can I touch on some news? Uh, mm -hmm. A little truck news. So Ford announced a huge investment, $1.45 billion. Billion? Billion, again, with a Whoa. B. Okay. Um, and they're focused on the next generation F-150. A lot of you guys are sending us questions about the next generation F-150. Ford said it's coming next year. Is this the hybrid? In the hybrid also. And uh, after that, there'll be an electric F-150. Uh, Ford promises. Yeah. And then uh, they're also talking about the Bronco. Well, when the, the, the hell are we going to see the Bronco? They said spring of 2020. But wow. Now, but now there are rumors that That's it when may... That's when we see it or when... We're... Debut. No, just oh. the debut. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but well, not cool. No, right. we still have to wait like four or five months. Well, that's not long. We waited for, what, five years so far <laughs> since they first started teasing us with it. Yes. Yes, yeah, we, we cool. waited for a long time. Cool. Are you tired? You're, you're no, tired. I'm just sad. I want to see it. Oh, he wants to see it. Yes. <laughs> Everybody and wants to see it. And, it's the um, most teased vehicle ever created in mankind, you know, <laughs> the Bronco. When are we going to get it? When are we going to get it? So, so also next year is going to be very exciting because yeah. potentially we're going to have the all-new Tundra. 
Uh, we don't, still don't have a date. Not just headlights or blankets? No, no, no. A real truck. Wow, truck. That, truck. that's exciting. And we don't know the date on it, but we're guessing, we're hoping Chicago. Okay. Are you going to be in Chicago? I'm going to try. Me and Dan, Dan and Atkinson, Mr. Big Truck, we're going to go there. We're going to ride up in that truck, and we're going to take 100 videos. and It'll be exciting. Stay tuned. Early February, Chicago Auto Show. Yeah. Our entire teams will be there. Yeah. Um, also, new uh, Frontier is coming next year. New the new Frontier. Really? The final new Frontier. <laughs> I would just get used to the old one. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, what, 12, 15 years old? And also the Ram wow. TRX. Oh, the TRX. The big I hope that comes out soon because they teased us with that, what, three years ago? Yes. And a if they come out now, it would be good. We're not sick of waiting for it. Yeah, so that, a that lot would, of... Oh, man, that means that that half-ton four-wheel drive market is going to be big off-roading. Guys, we'll have to have them on. You guys will have to buy one just for I can drive Absolutely. It. Yes. Uh, another question? You said there was a final one? Uh, Riley Coyote donated two bucks to us through live. Riley track. Coyote, thanks. Cool. Um, not a question, but a pitch for a video idea of the longest running nameplate for each brand. Well, the okay. Suburban wins the overall one, I think. The Suburban's yeah. been around since interesting. wagon yeah. wheels. That's a very interesting idea. Uh, thank you. Um, Mustang's been around since the 60s, but Suburban was probably around clear back in the 30s. 35. Yeah, 36. I mean, that's, that's a long time. That's before World War II. That's I know, crazy. that's a crazy thing. You yeah. were in high school back then. I right? was, I was. <laughs> I was probably in third grade for the fourth time. I don't know, somewhere back there. <laughs> Should we fire up the Rebel guys? Yeah, I want to hear some V8 Thunder. I don't know okay. about you guys. Now. So, Ken, do you want to go behind there? You mean to get gas? Lean down. Lean, lean down, down and get gas? <laughs> Put your microphone down there. Should I blow it up? What should I do? <laughs> Put your microphone there. Put my microphone in the exhaust pipe. No, no. Oh. No. Let, let's open the door. That's a good idea. Because I do not want you giving me mouth to mouth if I pass out. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at all these electric vehicles back here. What the hell is this? Yeah, we're starting our Loveland Trials series on TFL Car. This is a Kia Nero that we've had for some time. We're doing a long-term test on it. It's being charged. So TFL car is big into electric. Yeah. TFL truck, as soon as electric truck comes out, we're going to be testing them too. Well, that's cool. That's, uh, that's the future. I'm, I'm ready to get my first hybrid truck. By the way, guess um, everybody says the charging speeds are slow, right? Oh, that's yeah. That's what everybody always says. Uh, our level two charger, which is basically a 220 volt, like your dryer outlet would be at right, home. Right, that's how you weld. Uh, on the Kia Nero, we're getting about 30 miles per hour. So mm -hmm. if you have it charged for about an hour on level two, we're getting about 30 miles back into the car. So it is pretty slow. Star Starbucks and back, yeah. So it's pretty slow, but still, it's, I, I like the Nero. What the hell is, is that thing? Is there a key thing? in there? You seen that before? Is there a key in there? In this? Yeah, the key's in there. Oh, wait, right. we can hot right. wire it. Le 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 lean down. You mean to lean? No, okay. Lean down, huh? Let's see here. I know how these things work. Look at this. I can take this and this, and I can stick this right in the exhaust pipe. I'll just clamp it on there, man. I wouldn't do that. You want me to clamp it? No. no. I'm going back a little bit. Oh, a little bit? Is this sit going to fly out or what? It's not a diesel. I don't want to deafen oh. our viewers. Can't. You might deafen them. By the way, guys, Little Engineer Coloring Book. Um, it's a gift. This show is brought to you guys by this book, so use the link below to find it. I know, I should get one for my grandkids. Don't, don't make people deaf out uh, there. Well, really? Is it that loud? It's I, that loud. Is it 98 decibels or is it, I think it's like, I thought it was like 85 no, decibels. 116 decibels. 116? Yes. That's, that's what an F-16 does at takeoff. Okay. Let's see if I can melt, melt the microphone. Melt the microphone. Melt the down. so much <laughs> holy cow and, <coughs> and that oh. is and that is why fifteen hundred dollars or I'm not sure exactly oh, I'm not sure exactly how much the system costs but I think it's worth it <laughs> just just so I can scare Mr. Well, Truck yeah, I gotta scare the neighbors and, and, how and if we... I can get if I can get you scared did, did you get scared well, no, I just couldn't figure out why it's backfiring. But anyway, look at the pile you left on the floor. It's just condensation. What's, what's all that water doing it's in condens there? It's not a diesel. Anyway. All right, yeah, guys. you know what? Let's, let's start bidding on this thing now. We'll take offers of 100000 <laughs> 
95. 95,000. 90. Really? 90. 90. Okay, you're going the wrong direction. You're supposed to go up, not down. Okay, well, I don't know if we have any takers. Hey! Guys, <laughs> guys, thank you for joining us. We're having a show on Monday. And on Friday, both of us are around. Yes. So we'll do another truck show on Friday. So stay tuned for that. Come back and go back to cheerfultruck.com. And, and mrtruck.com. Merry, Merry Christmas. We sing Christmas carols on the Happy way holidays, out. everybody. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you. Andre, aren't you singing? No, we I'm wish not a, you a I'm Merry a Christmas singer. and a Happy New Year. Thank you.